Hey, welcome back, everybody, to another episode of Paradigm Podcast. You see the video quality? We might have upped and, you know, promoted a little bit over here. Sheesh. But before we get started, we're so happy you're here. Um, So we want to urge you to like the video, subscribe to the channel, drop a comment down below. If you're reading the book along with us, what do you think? You know, is there is there something you've really enjoyed from this book that you think maybe we missed and and you want to talk about it? Go ahead and drop that down below and then hit that little bell. And follow us on all our social media platforms. All the information you'll need will be down in the description box below. So our normal start, we start with a disclaimer. So we here at Paradigm do not claim to have all the answers. We simply desire to be better each day. We make videos in the hope that other people that desire the same can use some of the tools we've discovered along our journey. So the information for this discussion comes from the book Outwitting the Devil, written and uh authored by Napoleon Hill, and the chapters we are discussing this week are titled Hypnotic Rhythm and Seeds of Fear. Yeah? Bum, bum, bum. So we'll jump right in with the first question. What was your guys' opinion on these chapters? Uh, Start off, Deb. <laughs> I feel like I'm going to go like first. Yeah. He's like, I'm ready. <laughs> um, I'm locked in. I have uh, my main takeaway. I, I think I think it's mainly chapter six, um, okay. but... Um, it's like the non drifters, um, how they weigh in like opportunities. I'm just going to read what I wrote, uh, okay. uh, from these chapters is that non drifters wait, uh, for opportunities, uh, the quote unquote devil, hold on the place of good things. Okay. So like non drifters, they use, uh, like excuses or like maybe, uh, Oh, that's hard or that's impossible for the reason why they can't achieve things. Mm. Um, they use fear, right? That's what the devil calls it. The seed of fear. Mm-hmm. But he says, like, there's no such thing as luck. There's no such thing as, like, something impossible. It takes a lot of failure and dedication to redo things over and over and over to, again to see any sort of success in anything. That's what the hypnotic rhythm is. Mm-hmm. It's a habit that you build up over time. That's why people that think for themselves end up being a lot more successful in life because they built a, I guess, to keep it simple, like a positive hypnotic rhythm. They're not allowing something to tell them what they can and cannot do. And they're not allowing, let's say, the devil to say, oh, I'll give you this, but on my terms. No, the people that are non-drifters create the life they want on their own terms. Mm -hmm. That was my biggest takeaway. Proactively. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. How about you Um, guys? What are your guys' opinions? I I like this a lot during chapter six. Uh, Just the term hypnotic rhythm and him explaining it kind of just puts a word to a thing that like i guess i was already using but didn't know what to call it you know Mm -hmm. it just goes like back to the idea of like you are your habits yeah Mm -hmm. and then just thinking about it it's just like it's like it's like the song of your life you know it's like if you die like what would people say about you like you know like what was your rhythm you know were you like a sad guy were you like like no one knows what it's like behind blue eyes, you know, or were you like, <laughs> were, were you like best day ever, you know, were you like, you know what I'm saying? So, mm. um, and like, it can be a lot of different ways, but when I was reading that, I thought to myself, like, what are all the things that define like my week, my life? And, you know, and then I was like, then that's, that's pretty much my life. All that happens, I do pretty much every day, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I agree with that. Mm-hmm. Go ahead, David. Uh, for me, I I really like this chapter because I've been on a wave of, you know, like watching like scientific videos on physics and like, um, you know, quantum particles and stuff like that, uh, learning about the Higgs boson and quantum entanglement and stuff like that. And so when I was reading this chapter in the beginning, he talks about, you know, what is this mysterious law that, that the devil is using, uh, to his advantage and, and a law that kind of exists in the universe already, um, but he's just using it as his tool. And that law is, uh, you know, we'll get into it, but it's, it's the hypnotic rhythm. Uh, we've mentioned it already. Um, it's this sort of universal law uh, through which nature maintains perfect balance throughout the myriad of universes. And I thought it was really interesting because, um, you know, he talks about how the universe already is in a hypnotic rhythm that's natural, right? Like the dealing with time and space, you know, there's planets that are already where they're supposed to be. And then that's just the way things are. It's the reality of nature. You know, um, the way a tree grows, starts from a seed, always starts from the bottom up. Um, things like that, that we can point to in nature. And um, that really stuck out to me because he starts to bring that sort of pattern or repetition 
uh, rhythm, if you will, like John mentioned, like the song or the, the, um, the notes that nature plays in this composition of music is like all around us in, in the universe. And it translates into rhythmic patterns within ourselves and, um, you know, could be used for either good things or bad things, but it's always a rhythm. It's always something that's perpetual. And I thought it was super interesting. I mean, he talks about like what uh, Isaac Newton, how Isaac Newton noticed these natural things. Yeah. He looked at the moon and said, does the moon fall? Why does, do we fall? And then he, you know, discovered gravity and he invented calculus and all these things, but taking it one step further could have been, um, mm. you know, him looking at the, the law that, uh, you know, holds everything together, time and planets and everything. And, and it's certain spots in nature and it's, uh, it's in perfect balance. And so that, that thought that was super interesting. Yeah. Yeah. The way you described that was beautiful, man. Yes. You said the music that the earth play the of the world exists in. That was that was dope. Yeah. <laughs> Got right. uh, yeah. Personally, I, I thought it was a pretty good chapter. It's interesting how it applies to everybody. Like when he uses the word universal, it's not a lie. You know? Yeah. Everybody is subjected to a hypnotic rhythm and, and seeds of fear. So I thought it was extremely interesting chapter. And so we'll jump right into breaking it in. Let's okay. get into it. So first question, or now second question, what is hypnotic rhythm? Bum, bum, bum. Anyone want to take a my, stab at that? My, my, understanding, of, or, uh, my understanding is like um, just the habitual, repetitive nature that you, not just thoughts, but your physical existence, uh, your... Uh, your environmental uh, existence, things that are around you, things that you surround yourself by every single day. Um, but the main thing that the devil focused on was your thoughts, the things that into your mind and continue to like revolve and cre create a uh, revelation in your mind. Um, the things that stay there the most are what become you. And that, I think that's what the hy hypnotic rhythm is, is like a, it's the universal law of the human being. Okay. I, I think, I think it's not necessarily about the brain. It's more about the action. It's because it's a rhythm. You you can't like you, when you play an instrument, you play it in reality. Like you strum the chords. It's like an action. Yeah. So like you you are all your actions. And like so, what do you do daily? Like most people, like like the basic things. Like you wake up, you brush your teeth, you go to work, you take the, you take route whatever to get to work. That's all a rhythm you do. And then like that's like base level. Then it's like other level stuff. It's like the negative stuff that he'd want to add in your life is like you smoke a cigarette, like first thing in the morning, you know, like, uh, you smoke when you drive the, when you drive to work or like, what do you do after work? Do you go home? Do you watch TV? Do you go to the gym? Do you go get some sunshine? So like, what are all the actions you do? That's the rhythm you're playing, you know, because like you could say, you could say like, you're the healthiest person in here, but like, do you drink enough water? Do you go to the gym? Do you run? Like actions make the beat, I think, in my head. Yeah, so I, I would agree. I, I, Cause I thought the same thing reading this, but then the devil or um, Napoleon Hill asked the devil, like, so you're defined by your deeds. And the devil says, no, you're defined by your thoughts. And so I started thinking about that. So like thinking about brushing your teeth, like why do we brush our teeth? Like we could just go to work. We could just leave the house. Why do we go to work? Why do we, why do we do anything? We have thoughts, we have patterns. Um, and this is why I think like thoughts are like, um, the reason why people make decisions in actual terms or in action is because like, I want to have clean breath. I don't want people to think I stink. Uh, I want to become physically fit. I want people to think like I'm strong. So yeah. I go to the, you know what I mean? It's we we have a purpose behind everything. So I, okay. I, I, I hear you thoughts you before know? actions. You can't have actions without the thought before. Yeah. And I thought, I thought this, I thought actions were actually first until I read that part where you said the deeds are like, not what make people. It's your thoughts. What makes you. Mm-hmm. Yeah, as a man thinketh. Yeah, literally, as a man thinketh. Yeah. Anything to add to that, David? Yeah. Um, what is hypnotic rhythm? Yeah. I think I kind of mentioned it beforehand, but I, though I kind of broke it down um, as it's being described as sort of the universal law, first and foremost, right? Like if we remove ourselves from the equation, hypnotic rhythm already exists in the universe. Even the way the structures of like protons or not protons, um, just, uh, uh, what are they called? No, uh, neurons. Protons. Atoms. 
atoms atoms <laughs> atoms are made up of protons you know neutrons electrons and even smaller particles than that and that is in a sense like a sort of pattern or repetition that it's always going to be those things so even without us in there then the universe has its own sense of uh universal um law right and then that translates into nature and then we are here and so our our mind and our thoughts enter a sort of same structure and it can either be used for uh, a rhythm that works one way or another way i think it, you know there's many songs you can play with the the same um uh rhythm i would say um but we 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 are the uh, the um the sort of common denominator for which song we play right and that's our choice and that's why i think we have like the freedom of choice to um just include what notes we want to play and that, that translates into habit and we make our own rhythm and uh, rhythm our own rhythm turns into uh, the repetition or permanence in, in our lives right so um that's how i took hypnotic rhythm it's just a repetition of things like the person who goes to the gym after work like john said um they're healthy because they have a hypnotic rhythm that serves a, a healthier version of themselves a person who's you know maybe addicted to something bad or i don't want to say bad but <laughs> drugs or, or an unhealthy diet or maybe toxic relationships they're stuck in this hypnotic rhythm that is serving the 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 negative aspect um of nature or or what they're they're you know sowing I, seeds for the the the, the negative things yeah. i think he even says like hypnotic rhythm is like the advanced level of habit it's like what habit becomes permanent yeah yeah uh, right yeah i was listening uh, to a video earlier on hypnotic rhythm and he talks about the person who's learning guitar mm -hmm. right and knows chords you know, you know you start with the notes on the guitar you learn that then you learn chords then you know how to, you learn how to sequence them together to make music right you learn those habits and then once you become so good at those habits it's just a rhythm you just play yeah. and you're mm -hmm. mindless at that point that's what's hypnotic about it mm -hmm. yeah you're just true. playing because you know it you know it's out that point. there i mean I, I played guitar for since i was in like an elementary school and i remember staying up late super uh super late at night learning the same riff or you know pattern and now i can just it kind of comes back to memory because yeah. i can play it and that's like with any skill i think right like when we when we learn how to skate i mean man and i learn to kick up all the time but we could we know the moves that make it happen because yeah. we've done it so many times yeah you know dude yeah. i was black the other day and i left the bar and the guy to skateboard and i was like let me see that and i landed the kickflip <laughs> first try friday you yeah. know like i was like oh, oh. <laughs> you know that one kickflip you guys saw you guys don't know how long it took me to yeah. do that it took how many years kickflips. dog yeah you know what i mean <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I don't yeah i think it, um i think it's everything in life like you think of driving right like there's a rhythm in that there's a hypnotic rhythm like where you kind of just like have you ever heard anybody say like I don't even remember how I got here or like Ooh, they yeah. daydream while they drive and shit. Like that's kind of crazy, but it happens on a, like a regular basis because we get so like in our heads about something else that we're thinking about that driving becomes like this second nature that we're like, okay, I know how to make a turn. I know how to, I know how to speed up when I need to, like, you're not thinking about driving. Mm -hmm. You're thinking about True. something else. Yeah. So One foot in front of the yeah. other. So I don't think it's, um, I like how, how he uses, Mel melodics and uh, melody and harmony because like yeah you're you're choosing the the frequency which to vibrate at which is creating yeah. like this sort of melody and harmony like a song mm -hmm. in a way but i think it's everybody he's like a melody in my <laughs> <laughs> off topic but well kind of on topic I, I was watching the, the videos of uh you know um string theory and that that theory is that that they think that um molecules like quantum molecules are sort of like music it's like when you twang a like a string it produces like a whole bunch of particles that make up everything that we know is reality so it's like it's kind of like music it's like it's wavelengths so i thought i thought this was super interesting yeah. dude no it is it's like what it's napoleon hills natural law of life i think it's a natural law of like a human being's existence wavelengths yeah we perceive like light the things that we've like experienced right now i think is all a, a 
a product of patterns and, and wavelengths and stuff. Oh yeah, absolutely. There's stuff that we can't even see with our own eyes, like our own optical right. like lens. Mm -hmm. It's kind interesting. of interesting. That yeah. blows my mind. But so I'm gonna I'm gonna kind of give a caveat to this question that okay. we just talked about. But um, I want to know how does hypnotic rhythm manifest itself in the human experience? If you can give me an example. Itself. Didn't I mean we I think we talked I think we touched on this. It's it's habits. Habits. Yeah, I think that's the best way because hypnotic is like a hypnosis of some sort, meaning like you're yeah, consciously unconscious of a rhythm, and rhythm is just repetitive action or repetitive thought or repetitive anything. But what I thought was interesting too is when um I think it's maybe further into this chapter where he talks about how like um like the hypnotic part right hypnosis is almost like someone's under this like spell of of doing things yeah and i would always remember going to the fair and watching people get hypnotized and i've never gone oh, and yeah. like raised my oh, hand and seeing you. people got hypnotized or whatever and do like some crazy out-of-pocket shit but i remember people would always say like yeah you have to like be willing to be hypnotized for it to happen and then it made me think about how in, in, in this chapter, uh, I think Napoleon Hill talks about like you have to have a willingness to want to do either this rhythm or play these notes in your life or play these notes, mm -hmm. right? And, and there's a there's a certain like desire to like either do one or the other. Yeah. Um, I thought that was interesting. Yeah. What do you think the difference is between conscious hypnotic rhythm versus unconscious? You're making a oh, choice. It's a good choice. Or good, good question. I think it's you're actually making a choice to whether like be hypnotized or not be hypnotized unwillingly. You're either hypnotizing yourself or you're being hypnotized by something else. Well, you're making you can be hypnotized by yourself, but you're making the choice consciously to be hypnotized. Like you're making a choice to I'm going to wake up every single day to hypnotize myself to go to the gym. It doesn't matter how I feel, but I'm going to do that every single day. Mm -hmm. Or you can have your environment hypnotize you like this is where you live so this is how much money you're going to make forever for the rest of your life mm. uh -huh. just so get used to it so it's like you're hit you can, so well, that's unwillingly like, let's keep in mind this this chapter is about how like the devil's actually using hypnotic rhythm yeah okay so you're making the choice for you know waking up early these things that, that we, we would see here it's like thinking for yourself you know yeah thinking like for yourself like yeah non-drifter non stuff yeah. but the devil's using hypnotic rhythm, this natural law to his advantage to gain control of drifters and actually make them drift far, like really far. Mm -hmm. So those are the, um, uh, the weapons I would say that he's using against you. I just want to say when, when I'm hearing it, it almost sounds like negative about conscious and non-conscious hypnotic rhythm. Mm -hmm. There could be positive unconscious hypnotic rhythm. Yeah, like that's, what? that's what I was trying to explain. Like there is unconscious. For example, like my parents raising me and my dad like teach me things or my dad having a routine within the household that the routine itself just happens to be a positive habit. And mm. like it wasn't my conscious decision to follow it, but like it affected my life and probably still affects my life today. Or mm. like with you starting to come to the gym with me, you know, like it wasn't it was an active choice to come to the gym with me. But like we kind of like made a thing together, you know, like, right. like our lives, like we played the same notes together. Like we, I don't know, you know, like was it just you or was it both of us doing that together? Um, yeah, so like, I think I, I think other I think other people can like influence you and like maybe even make a, a, like a, a pattern in your life. Yeah, they could just be, I, end up being good. I think it. I think we're talking about the negative uh, aspect because I think for most non drifters it is hard for them to see the positivity and like, let's just say, Hey, let's go to the gym. Right. We see it as a positive, um, portion of the hypnotic rhythm, but they don't really see that because they're so, I guess, removed from, from the situation, um, that it is a positive thing. Right. Does it feel like we're, you know, you can kind of like prescribe positive habits to people or, you know what I mean? And then they don't, they don't see it as that. Right. It well, it just depends on the type of mind, mind frame you're in. Like, that's why I brought up, like, my dad, like, when he's raising us, you know? Like, was that right. my choice to be subjected to that rhythm? No. But you see the benefits of it. 
Well, now that I am a, an adult, sure. Yeah, like he's consciously conscious of like you're right, you're right. Because uh, that could be flipped on its head, where like you still don't have a choice based on like your mom and dad raising you a certain way, but say it's in a negative light. Like your mom and dad are like the quote unquote like the devil's operating within them, right? There, it's just like you have no choice out of that. Mm -hmm. Like you either have to grow up and figure. As a child, that's hard though because you're like not as an adult. Your like I can look know it. Yeah, yeah, your parents know, know but you don't because you're a child. If, you don't know enough about this life. If anything, they're trying to share with you their good habits if they have any, you know? Yeah. yeah, that's what I would imagine. I would imagine every parent's trying to do that. But along the lines of like a drifter, like to define consciousness to unconsciousness, I don't think either one's positive or negative. I think it's mm -hmm. just quote unquote like awareness. Yeah, I mean, trying to coax somebody from from drifting to non drifting, like you're saying, prescribing good habits to them, or even you know, in in certain aspects of our own lives, it's like um, it's difficult. You know, you like prescribe it, but you don't. They don't see yeah. the buoy floating in the whirlpool. It's you know what I mean. It's tough. I mean, and thinking about hypnotic rhythm is like a, as as strong as like the laws of you know gravity. Like this is a natural law, right? And we all are subject to gravity. We can't. It's it's hard to get away from that. I mean, we're all bound by those things, right? Mm -hmm. So there, there is certain rhythms that are hard to like get people out of. I would say. Did you use the um, example you used the whirlpool? Yeah, yeah, the world. Because yeah. I, I was reading that part. Uh, I read it over and over again. But go like, do you remember exactly what he was saying that part about like, the whirlpool? Like some people can't get out of the whirlpool, and some people can. Mm, yeah, I have that written down here. I drew a little thing of a yeah. little tornado and a stick figure guy falling down. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> is a whirlpool where you get stuck at the top and you fall, or are you just no? Nah, a whirlpool so is like a, a whirlpool is like in the, yeah, a toilet. Yeah, yeah. It just goes around and around, and then it goes out. So yeah. Um, right. you take those fire dumps, <laughs> you flush that toilet. That thing going I, straight down. I actually have uh, in my notes here, my reading notes. I asked um, <laughs> unless it's a massive poop. I was gonna say it was like clogging, uh, bitch. Chipotle and Taco Bell. <laughs> yeah, it was like clogging. <laughs> then, then we're gonna start overflowing. After a weekend bender, it's over, dog. Chipotle. <laughs> Chipotle. Uh, okay, okay. I said uh, the devil uses a whirlpool to describe hypnotic rhythm. Can we describe why? Oh, I see. I see where you're kind of. I would Ooh. say. Okay. okay. The reason why is because at the surface is when you start to feel it, and that's at the whirlpool's weakest. And the further down you go, the stronger, more concentrated it gets. Mm. And so, like, and you can take that in, in any way you want. If it's a negative hypnotic rhythm, the deeper you go, the, the harder it is to escape. Mm -hmm. But if it's a good one, the deeper you go, the more powerful it becomes. And it can be like, you may never you may never lose that good habit mm -hmm. it's like you know an interstellar when they're going to the big black hole gargantua bro they could blast out of the, the, <laughs> yeah. the, ed the edge of the black hole <laughs> but <laughs> once you go too far bro and you don't have enough energy it's lights out and you're you're going to the fifth dimension <laughs> yeah. Yeah. is there yeah. um like the whirlpool concept like because i find like how you explained it john like being at the top of let's just say a negative world whirlpool and like a lot of the times where negativity is driven in my life is from like the food I consume mm. and that will start a negative whirlpool. Mm, and if I don't catch myself fast enough to get back on like a healthy routine, then it starts to spiral into other parts of my life. Oh yeah. And I think like, like I, you have a good burrito and you're like, dude, that well, good. not even just a burrito. I don't want to like, go to the gym. Like, the cheesecake shit. I had to throw that shit away. <laughs> I have the perfect example. I had to throw that shit <laughs> this away. weekend. Okay. I went to a wedding. I haven't, <laughs> I haven't smoked or drank about five weeks. Last night I drank and I was like, all right, I'm going to take a little hit. And then, you know what I mean? I, I was on, on my thing and then I came home and then I was like, oh, my room has been so clean for five weeks. And then I came home and I was like, I'm just going to throw everything on the floor. <laughs> and I woke up this morning. And I was like, oh my God, there's like clothes everywhere. And there's like McDonald's in the kitchen. Just on like, you know what I mean? I haven't ate McDonald's for five weeks. Like, Whoa, that was a lot for one day. But um, yeah. You haven't smoked or drink in five weeks? I didn't know that. Yeah. You know, man, honestly, I like those breaks, man. Uh, last night was cool. Today is cool. But like, 
man, I just felt so good those five weeks. I yeah. was like, and I, just, oh, I don't shit. know if you guys can identify like any, like, I guess factors in your life that like, once they get introduced, obviously they come cause food for me is like, yeah, it comes and goes. Like I have to kick it to the curb. Like I have to kick that shit hard. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Cause if I don't kick it hard enough, then it'll like continue to like, especially yeah. if I get comfortable. I'm like, I don't want to work or I don't want to be on my best game. And like, that's where it really sets. So I don't know. I just thought I would mention that if you guys can identify like, any other factor like i think food's a big one like where that spirals into mm. like a fucking another spiral where there's just spirals going on everywhere in your life where you're just like social okay. media is a big one. Oh that's yeah a that's a big it's one. a deep yeah. hole tiktok for, it's a work hole. for me reading this i just kept thinking of smoking and i was like that's my that's probably my big negative whirlpool that i have in my life just Dang. like I could be better and I fucking know it, but I love getting high, dude. Like, it's, it's like, isn't it, like, that's, what, that's, that's what, like, even just vaping and shit, like, when I would, like, always buy vapes, I was like, dude, like, I think to myself, like, you're going to the gym, you're eating correctly and shit, but you have this one bad habit that you can't kick, like, what what yeah. how does that make any sense like and so it's like dude we're flawed as humans. but it makes like, perfect sense yeah like you said you're flawed so it's like it's yeah it's interesting how they're all tied together so you smoke and then you're like man i, I could go for some mcdonald's well, and then you get some yeah. mcdonald's and then you're like i don't really want to go to the gym and then you don't go to the gym and you're like oh, I'm comfortable See, <laughs> See, that's where i'm different i feel like i think like i'm bird kreischer the more the more i do bad I'll triple out the output. Like I, I don't yeah. care, you know. Yeah. So, but like the smoking, you can't triple output out. You're like, I'm John, shot. John's looking in the mirror, <laughs> like you're going harder tomorrow. Yeah, eating the yeah, cheeseburger. He's, he's like, like down yeah. to go further five steps. Yeah. It's interesting how they're all linked. I would say comfort is a good is a good one. <laughs> yeah, Late, comfort. That's just hard as well. to like uh like throw a dart at. You know what I mean? Yeah, because like, when you're comfortable, and you're with your girl at the house yeah. or whatever. You're like, man, I got to go to the gym. Yeah. Uh, Was it this yeah. week, John, where you're like? Dude, I've been going so hard at the gym and like running. He's like, if you want to get McDonald's, bro, go get McDonald's. Bro. Go get some cheese for your bro. I'm not gonna lie. I eat. Um, I've been eating the more McDonald's than I ever have, but I've been eating <laughs> twice as hard. Oh, um, I'm getting. I'm getting, dude. I'm getting stronger and faster every day. That's all I got to say. <laughs> yeah, John, text- as he pulls up to the drive-through. He's uh, he turns off the music. He's like, you're gonna go hard tomorrow at the gym. <laughs> dude, dude, dude. I got some McDonald's like, rewards out. Like I, I'm, I'm texting you guys. I'm like, dude, I'm fucking killing it. I'm like, yeah, one Big Mac, <laughs> two know. chicken nuggets. Like these, <laughs> these, these chicken nuggies are paying dividends, dog. I'm fucking getting <laughs> gains, bro. <laughs> yeah, the chickies, huh? <laughs> got a pre workout meal and everything. Yeah, dude. <laughs> McDonald's sprites, all you need. Fucking <laughs> clear, broken, yeah, like that. spicy pissed. sprite. That's oh, that's shit, McDonald's bro. sprite hits. Fucking crazy. Dude. That shit is different, dog. Dude, I'm t- but I'm telling you, though, I'll go eat McDonald's and then I'll go get a high and I'll go run with the ace. Like at night, at like 10 o'clock at night. I'm like, I fucking ate myself. I gotta go run right now. Yeah, yeah so. there's a bet ba- you found that balance. I yeah, you, there's a balance and shit. Maybe <laughs> freezing his ass off coming back to the apartment. Yeah, you deserve it. You fucking night. eat McDonald's. <laughs> Facts. This is I do deserve it. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna realist back in. Um, so we've talked about how Hypnotic rhythm can be positive and negative. Mm-hmm. Um, but I want to ask, how do we recognize when we are subjects of hypnotic rhythm, whether it's positive or negative? Uh, how would we recognize that? Mm, I don't know. Sure. Now, I, think okay, well, I, I thought about this too, Jay. And the way I answered this question was, I just lay, like, lay out all your habits, like from Monday through Sunday. Like, what are all your habits? And then if, if you were look if if this was said person X and you read the habits, would you think that person lives a healthy life, neutral or like, like negative life, yeah. just off the habits alone, the things you like, I do these things every week on Tuesday, yeah. I do this Monday, you do this. And then if you would read that as anonymous and get a bad vibe about it, then I mean, there's your answer. Yeah. Mm. That's a good book. Cause that I've seen, I've really seen, um, idea. Doug, um, he would, uh, he would post this uh i remember he had this like uh form that he would like have us like uh he gave to us he was like because i I know some people can't even fill out their day like some people can't even fill out like what they're going to do for the next few hours i think that takes some skill but some people like to get started on that on that journey like he had a form that was 15 minutes out from like what what do you do this 15 minutes what are you going to do in the next 15 minutes and it's a lot when you first start, but it's to get in the habit of building like a daily routine. Like mm-hmm. you can schedule out your week. Cause I know a lot of people that can't even schedule out a week of can't daily routine. Um, 
And I think that's a crucial identifier is like, what do you do in the next like three hours? Are you on your phone for like 80% of the time? Or are you like mm. productively like doing something with your time? And I think mm. once you look at that, and if it, especially if it's anonymously, then I think, yeah, you could be like, who schedules this? Yeah. You know what I mean? Who, who does this all day? But it's even in, like, you, have to, you have to be real with yourself though. Cause I know like a lot of us, we spend time on our phone, but it's like, is it mm-hmm. productive or is it hurtful? Cause I think there is off time, especially Wasteful, if you're like sure. uh burnout or like you just got done with the gym or like, you're like exhausted for something. Like, I think there is time to like release a little bit. Like you shouldn't yeah. be always 110% all day. Like you're going to kill yourself. Tell that to David Goggins. Fuck no. <laughs> David Goggins is a different human, but I think that's a <laughs> that's a good identifier is that the, the daily schedule, the hourly schedule, the weekly schedule. Yeah. Routine has so, to be there. So analyze your routine. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah, a good I one. I think that was a good idea. Those are those are so the question ideas. was how do we know if we're subjective to it? Or subjective yeah, how do we to know it? we are subjects of hypnotic rhythm? How do we I, recognize that? I think well going back to the beginning when he's when napoleon hill asked the devil you know kind of what this law is um the devil explains it is that we're all subject to it so i think everybody's in a hip a hypnotic rhythm we're all subject to this universal law kind of like you know like the laws of nature like gravity you know um uh i don't know what other laws are uh like laws of motion and whatnot right so we're all subject to them um i think it's I think the question is like the meat and potatoes of this question is like, what are we, what are we um, in a rhythm for? What notes is this song going to play right of our life? Sort of like how John said, you know, at the end of our life, you know, what, what was our, our composition? Like what, what was, what was um, our life looking like um, depending on our habits or the, the hypnotic rhythms that we were in? Like if we break it down, what wavelengths were we in? So, this chapter talks about um, how they can be, there can be like really good habits that we can have, right? That the non drifter tends to think for themselves, seizes opportunity, um, you know, doesn't fall subject to, um, you know, uh, what was it like a bad diet and a victim mentality and all those things. And um, the drifter is subject to the devil's use of the hypnotic rhythm. Um, explained in the chapter. So those are the technical big, bad things, right? That this person is receiving from the hypnotic rhythm because everybody's building a habit of something, right? If you are not going to the gym and you're unhealthy or whatever, whatnot, you've built up a habit that's giving you the, the, the uh, I don't know, I guess the result, like the cause and effect of, mm-hmm. of bad habits. Yeah. So that's how I see it. Okay. Cool. Does that make sense? Or? Yeah. 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 I think everybody's building a habit. Uh, even if you're not even aware of it, like yeah, you're successful at something waking up at, yeah, exactly. You're successful at something, whether you like the success or not, like you're successful at failing or not doing shit. Like mm-hmm. you're kind eating. Of like, so you're um, successful at something. it's just uh, you don't like that habit that you have. So you think it's not efficient enough for your life, but you're not willing to change it. So, mm-hmm. But yeah. So if uh, somebody were to jump into or start building a um, positive whirlpool, we'll say, um, or hypnotic rhythm, what benefits would you tell this person? Like they're skeptical about starting it, but what benefits do you get out of um, initiating and, and existing in a positive hypnotic rhythm? Uh, someone literally someone asked me that like they're like, why do you develop a positive hypnotic rhythm? I would just ask them why not? Like, why wouldn't you like what we only have one shot at this life? Mm. It's easier. Mm. not to. Yeah. So that's why I asked. So do you think it's like beneficial not to just like being able to question people like, yeah. okay, so why don't you feel like building a positive habit's a, a necessary thing? Cause it should be necessary. This shouldn't be a question. Like, no, I was just talking to Vernon about this. It's crazy. Just asking someone like, you know, what, like basic things, I guess yeah. I get, and let's just say basic or just like a, a, a a question, you know, what, what are your habits? Do, do you have a purpose? What do you, what do you, do you yeah. go to the, and if someone's offended, it's like, whoa, yeah. wait, wait, hold I'm just asking you what like, basic, ask you question. know what I mean? I'm just asking you something about your life. And, um, it's like you said, like, why, why would you not? The people that do things? get triggered and that are offended is be, probably because they don't have a solidified answer for you. So they feel like you're attacking them in a way because they're not sufficient 
their answer isn't sufficient enough okay, for you. So going off of that that uh that idea and based off what it's talking about in the book, I like how the devil in this book is um using people's thoughts against themselves if they're not thinking for themselves. Do you think the people that can't answer those questions or are drifting aren't actually thinking? Right? Because if you're asking someone like what do you want to do? They actually haven't thought about that question hard enough, right? Because mm. I would say if someone actually has thought about that, then they would say, oh, yeah, maybe I should do this thing. Yeah. Like, you know? what's your purpose? You know? Know? They haven't spent the time to actually um, think about where their life is heading. They're actually literally drifting in a whirlpool. Mm. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, it's interesting. This this chapter, um, It's it's so... It's such an analog to seven habits of highly effective people, because what I think this almost all boils down to is proactivity versus reactivity, like lifestyles, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. The person that's a drifter is a reactive person and rolls with the punches that life gives, right? They're get, they get what life gives them, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Versus the non-drifter slash the proactive person gets what they take, yeah. right? Right? They take, go ahead, John. No. Yeah. <laughs> they get what they it. take. He's going to say it. And so- no, uh, yeah, go. It really is interesting how it's an analog because as I've been running and listening to it, I'm like, man, this is like really. And we keep saying it every episode, but it's like they're really in line and they coexist. And um, it's just, I think it's just so wild how proactivity and reactivity, something as simple as that, can really define somebody's life outcome. I have a question, yeah. for everybody. Mm-hmm. When you were reading this book or this chapter, did you? take inventory of like friends or friends or people that are close to you or just people that you know and you're like oh damn like these people are kind of like drifting right now like i think and then most, these people, most are people are non-drifting yeah. um i thought that was pretty interesting because you know the way he's describing it i i did see people or you know kind of take inventory of people in my life that are drifting towards something but they just don't really know what it is yet um whether it's like bad or or good or or just something that's not that they don't they're not really setting up for themselves in life right it's just like god them yeah like whatever i'm just kind of yeah you know i was more thinking about i kept questioning myself and i was like are you a drifter or are you a non-drifter that's where i kept yeah in my head i was like wait I want to say I'm a non-drifter, but also like maybe I'm not, you know, I thought that I thought the same thing. Like I try to like, am I, am I a not like, how, how do I define within myself that I'm a non-drifter? Because how do I prove to myself that I'm non-drifter? Yeah. Like, how do I prove myself? I was like, cause like, I want to be, there's like some things that like, I think that I align, but I was like, well, I mean, I'm flawed in like a lot of ways too. You know, you ever think that we're, there's going to be parts of us and our, our, in a journey of life that aren't, totally um non-drifted they're just like certain areas like okay i'm just kind of drifting in this area but no matter what this area i'm going towards yeah. i think you know jordan, yeah. I mean? jordan peterson talked about it like you're a you're um you're a compass in the map uh, like you're a noob when you first started like you're a fool. yeah what is it the fool the fool you're the fool when you first start in anything in life you're always the fool but if you if you ever at a point fail to accept being the fool then you fail to accept that you're a non-drifter. You're actually drifting because you, you have to restart at every phase of life. Like if you're newly jumping into something, you're going to be a fool. You're going to be somewhat of a drifter. You just have to be able to control that and then become like a productive way yeah. to like. So it's, it's hard to kind of like tell people like, Oh, like how do you know if you're drifting or non-drifting? Like, I don't even know if I'm fucking non-drifting or drifting or if I'm, how do I identify if I'm doing everything in life correctly? Right. Cause I think what drifting and non drifting are defined as is like Jay said, like it's either productive or reactive. I think we'll have a maybe a better, I mean, we're halfway through the book, you know, and um, I think <laughs> as we're just describing this part of uh, <laughs> the, the drifting, non drifting, hypnotic rhythm part, maybe when we finish, we'll have a more like clear understanding. Yeah. yeah, I thought I think it's such a, a nuanced subject. Um, you can be a non-drifter in your life's purpose, but you could be a drifter spiritually, right? So I was like, ah, 
dude that's that's where i was saying questions and for me it was like where mm -hmm. if we're talking about the the four life dimensions from seven habits of highly effective people there's one at least everybody's driven drifting it's at least one yeah physically dude, mentally emotionally socially right i totally agree with you jay that's exactly what i was missing from my head because i was like for example i was like i think health wise i would say i'm not a drifter but that doesn't mean in my other portions of my life that i'm like tip top you know Mm -hmm. you you kind of just cleared like the puzzle that i was thinking about yeah yeah that makes sense there's four wheels yeah there's there's yeah exactly to the car so it's it's um uh -huh. the nuance of it was so interesting because you can think mm -hmm. and be like man i'm taking charge of myself um physically right like yeah. i think everybody here really is starting like has or is starting to take responsibility and uh not drift when it comes to physical aspect mm -hmm. mental right. as well i think a lot of people here are really breaking down mentally what they need to do and figure out spiritually i'd say you know even myself personally um i've been drifting in that aspect right so when we talk about drifters and non-drifters it's um very nuanced mm -hmm. is what i think yeah and um it's just a, maybe what's the fourth wheel uh so social uh and emotional is one physical mental and spiritual is the fourth which one do you believe you're lacking in spiritual spiritual yeah, yeah. I would, I would i'm just torn because it's like you want to jump into the spirituality side of things, but then that demands change. And so, um, I, but just to, do you have anything else to add to that? No. Uh, cause I think this, this really struck me. Like I listened to a, a podcast today. I'm always listening to podcasts. Cause I'm always driving. We're a podcast listening to podcasts. <laughs> yeah. Podcast and squared. I like, um, the older I get, I find myself <laughs> listening to more information rather than like music. Same. Um, but, uh, did you guys read the part where he talks about the thinker? Like, uh napoleon he'll ask him since you claim the church's help instead of hindering your cause tell oh. me what you would give cause what would give you cause to worry the devil answers my only worry is that some someday a real thinker may appear and so i was like okay well like that's that's it it's, it's just the book like i'm just reading the book at this point but then he, he starts to talk about like what what about a thinker is so worrisome to you and he says fear of criticism it may interest you to know that the fear of criticism, the only effective, or no, he asks them, what is keeping such a thinker from appearing in the world? Mm -hmm. And he says, fear of criticism. It may interest you to know that the fear of criticism is the only effective weapon I have with which to whip you. Mm -hmm. And so I put here like um, current times question mark. And if you look around, like we've talked about off, uh, off the podcast, like, I know spirituality is like some an area I lack in as well. Like that's something I never really dedicated enough time to really understand scriptures yeah. and stuff like that. But if you look around at just social media, if any sort of speaker were to lead a group or a cause or just for themselves and have a voice in a um, uh, very mindful way of themselves to think, like a non-drifter way of thinking, the fear of criticism allows people not to speak. They don't mm. want to be ostracized by the world. Right. And then on top of that, you, what we just, what we just saw in 2020 or 2021, 2020 COVID happened. And he goes on, he says, I thought the savage practice of crucifixion went out of the style, went out of style 2000 years ago. The devil answers. I don't mean crucifixion on the cross. I mean, social and financial cru crucifixion. Your income would be shut off. You'd become a social outcast, religious leaders and the followers alike would treat you with scorn. And it's like, dude, are we in these times right now? Like, are we in like crazy? I, time? Like, it's kind of scary. Yeah. I, I think him writing, him writing the book and him saying that is that like, there's nothing new under the sun, yeah. you know, like we're still dealing with like the same pitfalls of humanity. Like the devil's still yeah. the same guy, you know, only like the deck of cards has changed because humans have died. Like new ones have replaced them. Yeah. And he, when he talks about like, um, yeah, he it wasn't in this book, but it was in the podcast listening to most people that kind of stray away from like spirituality or like religious thinking around God or the devil is like they have this cartoon animation in their head of what it is. And it's like it's internal dialogue with yourself. That's where do, uh, yeah, God. Yeah. This you know, fucking bitch told me she's like, you think God's a man. I'm like, what are you talking about? <laughs> yeah. And it's like, yeah. and I, what? I, it, it makes sense, though, because like, look at <laughs> like, at least for us, like we did, we grew up with like a little bit of funds as children but we had mm -hmm. movies we had television we had cartoons our parents didn't really have that but now kids nowadays if they're showing anything around the devil or god it's going to be the images that uh, we saw when we were young too 
Mm-hmm. But yep. if you Fake don't get red devil, if you don't get like exposure to mm. like its internal yeah. dialogue and real understanding of what God, and I want to go ahead, John. I want to ask another question. Okay. Yeah. We're kind of pivoting to like, I guess the seeds of fear thing, but the devil says that the church is his number one propagandist for fear. Mm-hmm. What'd you guys think of that? That caught me off guard. True. I, 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 I was actually so. like, I was like, darn too bad, you know? And, but I've always told you guys, I'm kind of not a big fan of churches, but I, I am a believer and I think I have like a relationship with God. I, so I was kind of yeah. sad to hear that. I was like, damn. Well, I, I've always heard that. I mean, I grew up going to church, you know, with my mom and um, she instilled the fear of like the end of the world and the devil and in, into me and my little brother and my dad. I thought of your mom, actually. I yeah, what it, you say. it was very fear based. Um, you know, there's a lot of good stuff, too. But I just remember like how heavy that was and honestly kind of turned me off like sometimes from the the uh i guess the stuff that i i thought that this was supposed to be a good thing to go to church for and as a kid you know you don't really understand these grandiose like aspects of don't know talk about all, all those yeah. things right you just know so, you want to burn for forever. but you do i know when you're a kid you you just don't want to like see the world and i remember one time i my mom told me the or my sister told me the world was gonna end one day and i was like the whole world just fell apart. I was, I thought I was going to go crazy as a kid and it was really scary. And I thought about, you know, like the devil and the rapture and all these things. And it was really scary, dude. And I, I grew up to, um, I I remember going to church and hearing, uh, like the pastor and sermon speak about how like the devil operates in the church. It's here. Mm -hmm. It's like, he's doing this thing for real. And it's, uh, it's up to us to kind of be aware of that. And I never really understood that part. But I think now I kind of, uh, I do understand it. And I was like, yeah, I agree. I saw churches like fall apart and it was basically because of like, uh, I don't know, like, I don't know, organizational things or Politics. finance. Yeah. Po- yeah. Literally it would enter the church mm-hmm. and I'm like, isn't this supposed to be like, and my dad would talk about this stuff too. Um, and it, it would kind of deter him away from like all that stuff. And I, I was like, yeah, dude, I don't know. I, I, I guess whatever is happening that, that's preached about, you know, stuff to stay away from, like it enters the church somehow and it, it can kind of, it can be a bad thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think in Sunday school as a kid, what you remember the most is that if I don't believe in this, I'm going to hell. I, yeah. I, that's, that's kind of yep. one of the po- most powerful messages in Sunday school. And, you know, it's a shame that um, they don't teach framework and like paradigms of, of Christian living um, the, to the same extent that you hear about, you know, the, the, fi- the lake of fire. And um, it sh- yeah, it you, exactly. sh- you should be telling us about the doctrine, right? You should be telling us about um, paradigms of, of Christian living. Why is this a benefit? Why should I continue this as an mm-hmm. adult or as an adolescent? Uh, the, and you don't really hear so much of that. It's like, you have to do this so you can go to heaven. You have to do this so you can go to heaven. It's like, well, dude, like, teach me about something that I can apply right now. You know what I mean? Dude, yeah. I remember going to, like, those big, like, super churches when I was young. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think you might have came with me to, like, one of them one time. Yeah, I've been, um, to, I've been to a few, like, yeah, even with yeah. Michelle, too. Like, there's uh, a there's super church, and one of the pastors was like, uh, if you think you're trying to scare you into heaven, you better be damn sure I am. Yeah, dude. Dude, you better be scared. And I was like, <laughs> What? Dude. Dude. I mean, but I mean, I guess yeah, we're supposed to fear God. I mean, I fear God, but Healthily. like, it's it's a yeah, there's a healthy fear, right? You know, right? Yeah, and it's wanting to do good by yeah. your neighbor. Fear, like <laughs> this guy has a PowerPoint of the devil. And he's like, you need to fear this thing. <laughs> Scary. Yeah, the, yeah. I, I do like the. I, I like what he says there because it, it does make sense. It's like I have religious leaders putting people into fear. And therefore, they just kind of do whatever that person says. And that person may be saying something that is from a darker negative spot. Yeah, their, their actions might be fueled from actually fear, not from like what it's supposed to be, which is, yeah. like, which is like good based, you know? Yeah, yeah. yeah I, thought that, I thought that was really interesting. And um, it made me sad. there's another point in here kind of similar that I, I thought I just wanted to get your guys thoughts. Um, he says, power is the thing that counts. Mm. Inmates of the poor house are nice enough, but they have no power. They, there is no virtue in being nice. Those who demand what they want from life and make, uh, excuse me, those who demand what they want from life and make life pay do so with power. 
get this clearly fixed into your mind if you wish to make life pay. Um, so the idea that power is king. Right. What did you, what are your guys thoughts on that? Dude, I thought this is a very interesting, um, you know, portion of this chapter where uh, this is the part where uh, the devil is explaining that if he can't um, control your mind, he'll actually kind of uh, um, open up access completely to the, what he calls it infant intelligence, right? Infinite intelligence. Yeah. Yeah. Like the, the, the hypnotic rhythm or the, the, what, uh, the, I guess the idea of, you can you can do these things and use this universal law, like the law of attraction, um, for for the bad things. Like I mean, I guess bad, but not. We're talking about power and lust and greed and, and gluttony. Those are a form of hypnotic rhythm. That's or those are a form of um, those are things that are attained through hypnotic rhythm. Um, just like the same way that things are used for like the the good things, but it's it's almost sort of like a like an evil powerful thing it's like it's kind of scary i don't know how, how either way it can go either way yeah I, I thought that was interesting that he he also works like the devil is just so manipulative that he can just kind of like open up access to like that and he's like hey you do what you want with it yeah. it's like a bribe it's almost like you, you use these things but it's up to you to just you know what i mean you can have it it's very fucking yeah, yeah, evil i'll give you the money. <laughs> yeah. yeah let's see what you do with it yeah yeah that's yeah it is interesting yeah, yeah. I don't know. I think, um, I think a lot of the power comes from like ego. It's ego driven. It's nothing to benefit any like sense of, uh, the well being of the community. You know what I mean? Especially if we're talking about power, like not, not too many people are handed power at, at a large scale, mm. right? It's usually individuals that are handed power. Realistically. Yeah. yeah. So I well, think it's, go ahead, John. You go ahead. Finish that. I just, I just, uh, I just think it's like rooted in eagle, uh, eagle, uh, ego, and 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 uh, like what they talked about in the last chapters, ego and vanity. Um, like what you guys are saying, like here, here, you can use all this, all these resources. I'm going to open this up to you. Like if the devil is being manipulative and, and trying to give you a, a certain amount of power, but you think it's in the form of a good way. But once you get that power, you turn into a different person. You exercise it. Yeah, and it's like where did where did you lose yourself? It was it after or before you gained that power okay um that's gara to uh Suchikage. he said when did you first forsake yourself huh Ooh. i kind of yeah because i kind of thought about it, i, I kind of thought about it differently it's like the only way to make a big a real difference is if you have power and then it's like well what is power because like the power of saying no to th saying no to things yeah is power in itself you know like mm -hmm. you don't have to make Decisions, you can decide to not make decisions and then like you talked about people granting you power well a lot of times like well true power like the examples of like someone win the lottery and someone earning a very extravagant life the, the one difference is that someone got handed it another person built the hypnotic rhythm was disciplined built people around them and then they obtained power like i could obtain power by like being a pillar of my community and mm -hmm. like the habit of like being constantly like the good then like people would trust me with trust. I could like do more, you know? So like, it's all about, so I just thought about like the power. I don't know. I don't yeah, know. Yeah. I, I hear you. I know. I hear what you're saying because I, it, it just clicked in my head. Like um, the previous chapter, we talked about bribing people, right? What's the difference between someone winning a lottery between compared to someone that built a six figure business from, from the ground up with their own community. This person built a lot more wisdom and and trust and 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 discipline amongst discipline. the people that get, are created around him compared to someone just being like here's 10 trillion dollars go do whatever you want with it mm -hmm. right what's yeah. your lifestyle like when you receive that money where do you currently live all that stuff is just going to be amplified right mm -hmm. so it is I, I i i agree with that i think it i think that's how you really identify the like difference or the levels or the significance of what kind of power you achieve because mm -hmm. there is different powers and that's why I was saying the, the power of no, because like, for example, sometimes like at work, like we brought up talking about COVID, like you had to get, like you had to get vaccinated. Well, no, you didn't. You had the power to say no, you know, but like who, who executed that power? Mm -hmm. Not a lot of people because the risk to reward, it was, it was un uncertain, right? That's but true. it was a power. And if you had a skill, it was a leverage. That was like, that's your, like your thing. But if you said yes, during a man that, you know, you didn't want to, well, like, then you didn't you didn't exercise like your own power you know 
um, you don't have to work anywhere. Like you don't have to be with people. So like, if things aren't good, you can always exercise the power of just saying no, you know, rent is optional. Huh? Rent was optional. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> yeah. 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 No, no. Not, not, not for legal citizens, not for people like me. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I had to pay my rent. Yeah, actually. Sorry. Just say no. Uh, yeah. All right. Um, so from the chapter seeds of fear, what are some key takeaways you guys got? I think we kind of uh, talked about stuff already in that chapter. Um, me too. The church thing was a big thing I want to talk about. I, this ours I was, short. Oh, okay. One big thing I wanted to say is that um, in this book, in in our book, David and Devin, page one twenty four, he talks about um, after he's successfully obtained someone on his side, a drifter, Napoleon Hill asks him like, "Why don't you just condemn them?" You know, and he was like, "Well, why would I waste?" You know, he's like, "Well, while they're alive, I use them as propaganda." Oh, yeah. mm-hmm. That should really click to me because I feel like, especially nowadays. Like my opposition is people who their propaganda is fear. Um, yeah. I feel it. Like, and I feel like I am an, at opposition to to that type of evil. Like, yeah. I feel like people who are scared tend to want to like shackle the people who 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 aren't. Right. You, <laughs> you know, should be like me, huh? It's like you should be feeling like me. Why don't you feel like me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. and exactly. And, and I feel like my life because like. I have a lot of flaws, but one of my pros is I don't think I am scared to like try something, you know? Yeah. And and I think that tends to rub, uh, tends to make me a lot of friction sometimes with certain people because like something innovative, like you to brought up the canvas thing. They don't want to do that canvas thing because like they're scared that it will shake the ecosystem. Mm-hmm. It's like, well, f- fucking, all right, pussy, you know? Yeah. Like, <laughs> uh, yeah. So. Uh, that's that's a big thing for me. I was like, ah, I think like the biggest opposition in life is the people who their biggest propaganda is fear. Mm. Yeah, yeah. that's my big takeaway. And yeah. I want to, and, and I want to be in opposition to that. If I can do right. one thing to the world, I want to be opposition to fear. Yeah, I think it's uh, fear is the lowest form of energy, and love is the highest form of energy or frequency. I don't know, saying that right, but I think that's why fear is so. Like, once you get people to be fearful of anything in life, then it's easy to manipulate. They'll give it all up, right? If I was like, if I just was like, dude, the fucking everything's gonna collapse tomorrow, you'd be way more, way more easier to manipulate rather than I was like, dude, your life is great right now. You have an amazing job here, but come here, let me let me show you something. Yeah, here's (laughs) here's a good sell that we get told a lot. There's school shootings everywhere. We need to take your guns. Yeah. That's a big fear cell. Yeah. You know yeah. So it's like we get it every day. Every day. That's that's, that's and social dog. media is good propaganda, like a good pusher for that. Yeah. You know, yeah. It's, it's like you get it because those people are the are the people that are online. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. 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 And this like dude, I see like when I'm driving sometimes, bro, like I see some people that I'm like, how I just wonder like how did you get to this point? I, I just, they're, like, they're wearing masks in, they're wearing masks in their cars and shit. <laughs> dude like i like there's people that work at the front registers that still wear double masks i'm like i just can't wow. believe that like parents raised them they like grew up they like moved out and then they still decide to double mask like i can't believe it. <laughs> i just yeah. don't get i don't i don't, um, I don't yeah. understand it but what one part that i really liked in this chapter where um kind of like back on the the uh church and religious leader example mm-hmm. um is that uh you know, um, they they can operate or the devil can operate in, in those uh, scenarios and when he's, you know, capitalizing on the fear that's being told, right? You know, fear the devil, fear, fear all this stuff. But if you if you think about the power aspect, you know, churches can have a lot of power and religious leaders can have a lot of power. Mm-hmm. And if there is no, if it's not voluntarily applied to, to someone, right, you're just kind of forced into this situation, um, then uh, it, it talks about it on this part. Um, uh, Napoleon Hill asks if the force of hypnotic rhythm is not voluntary applied to attain definite ends may it be a great danger and the answer from the devil is yes and for the reason that it operates automatically um, if it is not consciously applied to attain a desired end it can and it will operate to attain undesired ends so the hypnotic rhythm also has this um, this like characteristic of it that it, it can just produce things that are undesired because it that's just the way i guess things things are i mean he uses an illustration of climate right um trees will grow 
um, somewhere in, in a hot environment and adjust to the weather, just like nature does. Right. I mean, we're, we're having, there's a cause and effect that's, that's, uh, you know, evident in nature. And I thought that was really interesting, you know? So it's, I think, you know, for the viewers or whoever's reading this book, you know, we know that the hypnotic rhythm exists and we have to have a certain responsibility and in a uh, certain knowledge to, to use it to our ability. Right. You know, like kind of like, you know, superhero thing with weight, with great power comes great responsibility. I kind of see the hypnotic rhythm in that light too. Right. Someone hands you these things in life, you know, depending on who you are at this time, you could either use it for this thing that might be undesired or it may not have a purpose or it might be bad or it could do a lot of good but it just depends on your habits and the rhythm um i thought that was super interesting because otherwise if you just have nothing then undesired things are just going to start happening and there's going to be really big effects right mm -hmm. yeah so. yeah because if you don't make decisions it'll be made for you somehow yeah. some way yeah yeah. But, yeah that's the real point um so my last thing i want to mention is uh in the in the book the devil says that the human fear that best serves him is the fear of death so how would you guys deal with that i don't know i always tell myself like if i ever get to a point where i have to like get close to death i have to understand like i've, I've appreciated life up to this point like i have to appreciate death mm. like if you're gonna if you're gonna be here and live you're not like I guess, quote unquote, suicidal, then like you also have to appreciate like any form of like death. And when people leave this world, like, you know, just imagine if we lived forever, like what would that world be like? GTA. Hmm. I don't know. Bro. I've seen some GTA. crazy ass TV. I've seen some crazy ass TV shows and I know it's a hard comparison because it's not real, but like watching stuff like say altered carbon, if anybody's seen that, like, I don't know if I want to live in that world. Where like your conscious is being oh, able like to like, yeah, type like shit. type yeah. shit. Like, I don't, I, I kind of want, I kind of want to die. I, I don't want to <laughs> leave. I don't want to die, dude. Um, <laughs> yeah, I think it's it's noble to you know um, exit. I'm gonna say exit this life um, with with something, a mark that you left on on people, relationships, and you had something to stand for, right? Mm -hmm. You know, I think about heroes of war mm -hmm. when they go, they went to war and they. I mean, there's, there's probably a lot of them that knew that they were going to, they ain't coming out of this thing, you know, but they, they stood for something great. So I think that's very important. Um, it's commendable. It's honorable. Yeah. So, so appreciate death in the same way you appreciate life. Um, and, yeah. and be honorable in the way you live to make death. And if that's the devil's favorite weapon, imagine if you could at least take one of his arsenal of weapons out. I just want to say you can turn that though. Like you guys have definitely heard me say, I could die tomorrow. You know, yeah, exactly. So like I want to like like I want to let you guys know I love you. You know, mm -hmm. um, and like it's normal to be scared of death. Like you should be, right? That's like what keeps us alive. Yeah, literally. Uh, when we were in the blizzy, dude, <laughs> dude. that's crazy. Yeah. yeah, you're scared. You're scared. You're like, dude, like, like what if lightning strike? Like, would we die? Like, that's pretty yeah. crazy, right? We can't, we can't stop the lightning. <laughs> I'm gonna ride the lightning, though. I'm gonna ride it out. Uh, <laughs> so, so, but the like, essence of stoicism, right? <laughs> yeah, it's like you could die tomorrow, so make today count. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, if if you are fearful of death, as everybody is, at least in some sense, um be appreciative of it. I like what Dev said. It's like, if death's coming, then I have to make life valuable. And so take that mindset, the essence of stoicism and, and move forward with that. I think, um, one last thing, <laughs> I wonder if like, I know we won't ever know this, if this, this probably won't ever exist. I don't know. Maybe it will technology will advance so much, but like if there's a clock on our wall that showed us when we were going to die, how fast would we try <laughs> to get things done? Bruh. I wouldn't want to see that. So I, mean, I wouldn't want to see it either. But like, what if they just like, what, what if we felt like we could know, right? If people wanted to know, you could know. If you didn't, you didn't have to. But like, if you could know, yeah. would it give you more pep in your step? Or would you turn into this like, fuck this, I'm just chilling. I don't know. I, I wouldn't look. Now, I think it'd be the same exact thing. Some people are like, oh, I'm dying in 100 days, 17 hours. And, you know, they're like. Or just stare at it. And just like, I, mean, I guess I'm just going to chill at the house. Or there's, yeah. there's going to be somebody that's like, oh, I got 100 days. I gotta get to it. That's, yeah, that's I mean, what I, I feel just like, like I everything. Would that. I would do that because yeah. I feel like, dude, I don't. Tomorrow's not guaranteed. It's not real. Bro, I'm getting so. like hella credit cards. Fucking just <laughs> that bitch up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm going everywhere. Go to your family. <laughs> nah, nah, nah. Right? Yeah, 
You nah, can be wrong. You can live longer than that. <laughs> I'm Juan Rodriguez at that point. Oh shit! Yeah. But yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. So, other than that, I, those are all my points. Do you guys have anything else you'd like to mention? No, I feel like we covered the chapter very well. Yeah, yeah. let's we take us out. out. Yeah. All right. Thank you guys so much for tuning in to another episode of Paradigm Podcast. Uh, don't go get credit cards before you pass away because it could go to your family. So, so I was just joking. Um, so, <laughs> before yeah. you take off, uh, we want to remind you: like the video, drop a comment down below. Was there something that we maybe missed, or is there something you like us to talk about a little bit more? We'd love to engage with you. So, drop that down in the comment box and below. And if you like the setup, uh, yeah. I, like we love to hear someone's co like comments or whatever yeah. what you think, or maybe just give us advice on like, because um, like working on a studio is kind of like hard to start adding things once mm. you kind of already have like the table and the the microphones. From there, it's personal perspective or personal yeah. Yeah. Uh, preference so, so what would you like to see yeah if anybody right. has like youtube tips or like uh, video tips or like uh, what we do here like yeah. tips drop that drop leave us a yelp review yeah, yeah please, please do <laughs> please do um and then uh follow us on all our social media platforms all the information you'll need will be down in the description box below hit the subscribe button the little bell next to it and thank you so much again for tuning in uh, but before you take off remember who you are today and who you are now equals who you'll be tomorrow Peace. Bitch, I believe that. <laughs> I believe that.